Good day, everybody. Hello. Just making a couple quick updates here in the settings, if you'll bear with me a moment. Hopefully you're doing well. I appreciate you uh, coming back, visiting during another Behind the Dice episode. Talking about a few different things today while I am uh, going to sit and make the mini for Black Rose. Attention, spoilers ahead <laughs> for well, Merge Worlds, but I thought we'd talk about, again, story, characters, and um, stories within a story. I'm excited to kind of touch on that. So, I've gone ahead and I've pulled up my original Dandelion Mini, because the face and hair color is still identical, skin cone still identical. That's not going to change. So it's just more about removing the equipment, the stuff, and then remaking her uh, in the secondary pose. So, so that's some options there. So let's uh, start by getting some of this stuff cleared out. Kind of start from scratch. Moving first, that, here, that. Now the rings are going to come off. Down to weight so we can kind of, it's the base model. Hello, Panda, and hello, Gucci. Good day. Welcome back. Appreciate you coming to chill with us. Uh, let's see. Got to get rid of stuff on the stage. That stage itself, I can adjust. So... Getting a safe location, your single player code in. That is perfectly fine, Sariani. Take all the time you need. Um, so right off the bat, close on the young lady. And we just need to fix her, fix her pose too. Um, ooh, they've added some new ones. I like it when they do that. What do we got? Got a running version now. That's just like she's streaking. But I'm glad that they added some new ones. Uh, so where's the standard starter position? That'll work. All right. So we are making rows today. I don't know why I never made rows beforehand. I guess is that. Plus the hands on these things are so big. There's no way to make the hands smaller. Hands are always the same size regardless of how big you make the body. The strange things about this. We got the new shirt here. Let's see what that. I'm not giving her that, but I'd be interested to see what it looks like. Knight, banneret, tunic, and chest guard. That's a nice little outfit. I remember that for future characters. New there. I always like to see what new stuff. I haven't touched it in a couple of weeks, so nothing new in the head. A couple of new shoulders. Jabby, they would go with that previous. The chest we looked at. New gloves. Oh, the fingers look really good. Some of the gloves don't look as good. I don't use the gloves as much. These the pants for that other set. I really like the pants. I can definitely see me using these pants with a lot of upsets. Or a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, subjects, and uh, that is a booty hugging pair of pants if I've ever seen one. Interesting, interesting. I don't. I'll leave those on for a minute. What we got for shoes? We've got to be the boots that go with that, and they make a high heeled version. I don't understand the high heeled version. Like I understand you're making someone look like that, but like high heels would offer zero benefit in combat. You know, finish this on your house new location. Okay. Saying it's it's odd that uh, that's a thing, but we're going to be going more for a dress for this character. I'm trying to decide whether I want to do just one or two dandy, phrase one or two rows, um, rose characters, because there's rose when she met with Artemis, and then there's rose when she's out doing rose things. Although those ones, she's usually wearing a mask does do that. You don't normally get to see her face unless she plans on killing them later. So let us begin with legs. Oh, heels make handy makeshift daggers on your feet. I guess so. Saying in the middle of other combat, though, I think that could be challenging. Let's see. There's... Let me look at something that was more like a longer one piece, and I don't think they offer much. Sadly, everything because everything's top and bottom segmented, 
Many of them aren't really designed. That one, that one's very likely what we're going to go with. Unless you want fairy leg armor. No, probably not. But a kilt! So, that looks weird. X weave wrap. No, we're going to go with that. Find ourselves a shirt pop that would go well with this. And, see, not going to work. Maybe. Oh, I kind of thought something more. I already did that one. Well, that. Not horrid, but I'm still not happy with it. There's got to be some dress tops in here. Let's see. I almost see her pulling something like that. Quite in this situation. We want something that's protective for combat. Giant beads. You don't fight with that. Create a warrior type character who always wears blue heels and follow the path of anything as a weapon. Fair enough. Battle harness. Got to be some dress tops. That looks like Flintstone shirt. Wilma wore. Got down here. That's. It's not horrid. That's that's the first step to actually looking like a dress. That's that leaf thing again. I kind of like the top there. Now the bottom doesn't matter. Really wanted to be more of a long sleeve thing. Actually, I wanted to be relatively conservative. Side. I'm not real happy with many of the ways the tops match this. That's almost just a t shirt's almost closer to what I was going for. Check it back to make sure we didn't miss one. That, uh, that's not horrid. Kind of, kind of seems to go with the belt in the middle. Ninja top. Not bad, but I don't think she'd go. Hmm. It is for Rose, Michael. Yeah. I think they go something like this. It's obviously not something she wears often. That would be the other one. And that kind of matches it as well. So I was leaning towards this one as well. Um, so I, don't, I guess I think I like this a little better. Stick with that for now. And she would not have gloves. We'll have shoes. Our feet. I'm going to do a couple little things like this tonight. Uh, we will be discussing the Rose situation some tonight. So, uh, so again, I'd like to mention uh, spoilers potentially ahead. I lay flats. Normally what I do when I want to wear just like a simple slippers. Again, meeting with Artemis. This is kind of the outfit that she wore meeting with Artemis. I, uh, not what she would normally wear going out and doing. What she might meet, wear when meeting with the uh, Thorns. But if she's actually to go out and take care of business, which she would do. I think I like those a little better. And uh, she has an outfit for that. And so, only out of Jester boots. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Anything new in the way of masks? Type of death they added recently. Doesn't really scream dandy to me. Okay. So, when it comes to jewelry. Is I think we're gonna do two tonight. We're gonna do this one, which is pleasant rose, and then we're gonna have combat rose. Work at a couple things. Hair. The hair is one of ooh, they got some new haircuts. Oh, that's nice. They have not had a lot of really nice detailed haircuts for ladies. And I'm not sure Rose doesn't have these. But I oh, I really like that one too. Oh, I'm glad to see some new options. Where's her hair loose, unlike Dandy? That's more like what I'm looking for. Okay. 
I want her little ears to stick out. That's perfect. Rose is not cocky nor turdly person. Ah! Why? Why? <laughs> Sorry. I do that every time I make a character. It just tickles me. I'd like them to add the option to have a table. Like, be sitting at a table. Instead of just always standing there. But I understand why they would. This one's going to be relatively simple. Because she's not going to have a lot in the way of gear. Always been my attention that when she met, she was very plain to as not draw attention to anything special in the conversation with her and Artemis. There just to have a conversation. All right. I have some sitting pose. That one. That one. Listen, Artemis. How things are going to be. That's actually not bad. Oh, an arrow pose. I don't want. We use things a little bit more active when we do the second rows. Mm, I'm torn. So, uh, for those of you who've been keeping up with Merge Worlds, I hope you uh, like where the story's going so far. Now that we've had the Rose reveal, we'll be going back to the kids for a while. The Rose thing exists, and we'll definitely be dealing more with it from time to time, but it's not going to be like an every episode storyline. Uh, it's meant to be a little different there. I kind of liked let's see uh, added about for a quality of life monster single player game okay gotcha yeah the compass thing I'm sure would be helpful all right so we've got that jewelry gear wise I'm not giving her much she did not that room was meant to be plain she doesn't wear earrings she wears one ring on her right hand in the middle finger. One ring that looks plain. Why is there one on a pinky finger? Be from before. One ring. There we go. I wasn't originally going to give her a necklace, but again, I'm also not completely out of that. The clothing. Heck. Oh, they added a whole... They must have a whole gesture set. I wasn't aware of that. I can make use of that. Now, I'm saying I didn't know if I was going to add a necklace or not. So if I do add a necklace, it's not because it's important to the story, to be honest with you. Because I think it looks good. Everybody wears that one. I'm not sure why that a dented metal, why a metal choker would look good. That's if she can't scratch her. F cow neck brace. I'm gonna sue everybody. I own this place. <laughs> All right. I was gonna do something simple. That should work. <clears throat> All right. So Rose is both a pro and a con for Serenity, right? Rogue Lord, head of the Thieves Guild. So. 99.9% .9 of the criminal actions going throughout the city go through her or under her sway. 
time does keep unorganized crime, which can actually be more chaotic, from occurring. And she does have a set of rules which are slightly beneficial. Is her thumbs partially red? I had that happen before. Okay. Stage. <clears throat> what are we going to put on the stage? Money. Oh my, I put her in a chair. I forgot about that. They've added the new the battle chairs, wheelchairs, which look pretty awesome. That's just a rock. Barrel. Look too pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, a little pony is probably more like it. Still. Back to what we know. So... <clears throat> Not going to do too much on the base, especially in this one. This this one's just meant to be her. That looks kind of thiefy around her there. We are going to make it stone though. She's more in the sewers for this. It would not be made of wood. Is wealthy. Okay with that. Do a little bit of coloring. One of the nice things of using a character that I, I'm altering a character I already have, I don't have to worry about skin tone and hair and color and all that. I, they're identical because I'm just reloading that character into a new one. Interesting fact Rose has taken no last name. Black Rose or Rose, but that's it. has claimed no last name, at least up to this point, or publicly. Do anybody remember what color dress I said she was in? Looks in the car. <clears throat> that made me think I had her in purple. The thought. I wanted it to be a darker color, but I didn't want it to be specifically black. color itself is not meant to be significant <clears throat> not blue because she's a special cleric or purple because it's a mage thing she is hands down just a rogue just a very very good one take a whole lot of time to put this one together this one's going to be easy gold that one is Uh, back over here and grab purple again. That for finish. <clears throat> grab gems. Gem. That, that makes sense to me. Leathers. So, when creating your Dungeon Dragons adventure or storyline or whatever it is you're looking to do, <clears throat> it's not imperative to have long-term goals. There is absolutely nothing wrong with writing an adventure for adventure's sake that doesn't tie into anything else. That is totally cool. By all means, do that as much as you'd like. You do not have to try to hide stories within stories and that kind of thing like I do a lot. <clears throat> but... You know, in my in my thing, I'm I'm doing a lot to specifically to specifically have those long term situations. So you should not feel that you have to by any means. Um, that said, it is a lot of fun uh, when you can be like, okay, cool. Well, uh, all this stuff you've been doing is is for a reason. 
or <clears throat> the three bad guys you fought are linked together in some way. It's always a nice surprise for your party. Most people seem to like that tying in kind of thing. Um, so, <clears throat> for those of you who want to have a longer or hidden things in a story that you'd like to have move out onto being important later, there's a couple different ways to do that, but my favorite way to do that is hiding it. Making something memorable enough that when it comes up in the future, you're like, well, I remember that happened. But not so apparently obvious that people are like, oh, this is important, we better remember this. Sometimes, no matter what you do, they're still going to realize that's what it is. Sometimes they'll just be oblivious and won't remember it at all. You're like, I don't remember when that happened. Um, so it's a fine line that you walk there. Early in your story, if you have a storyline, have a here's the big bad, here's the what there, it's what's going to link our adventures together, but that's all that I've got. Okay, cool. Do not begin by automatically trying to hide things in the adventures to map. Give your characters especially if they're new characters, give your players a chance to learn their characters. Run a small one-shot get-together, maybe just a small one- or two-part adventure, something to give them the chance to play their characters for the first time, give them a little bit of the identity that they want them to have, and, and learn how they want to act. Because there are many times, myself and many other people, you, you'll create a character say, oh, he's going to be like this, or wow, she's going to be this kind of a person. But then you start playing them and you find you're leaning a completely different way that turns out very much like you, like the uh, opposite of what you wanted. And not in a bad way, but you, you, you find something that fits better. You have a, a, a good kinship or a, a brother-like, sister-like friendship or, or a relationship with somebody else in the party. Maybe somebody like this group, uh, a Darsh person, immediately comes to be annoyed by and yet feels very protective for Dandy. Mercy and Artemis becoming best friends, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of times that's going to lead you towards your storyline. Running that first one or two episode, one or two short shots, or even a couple of you know, short adventures, giving them a chance to build their characters, make sure it's somebody they want to stay with. Because that can happen. Everybody could write their characters, and one person just hate what they've created. Like, hey, when we play next time, can I play something else? If out of the gate you have locked in a long-term story on that uh, that involves that character, that could ruin things for you. Or you have to say, no, you have to keep that one, and they're not going to have fun. Give them a chance to get the, their feet under their characters and say, yes, this is someone I'd like to play, and this is how I'd like to play them. Uh, because that, more than anything else they do, is going to give you hints of how to progress their story. Um, and But you do want to do that. You want to make sure that when you're writing these adventures, you're DMing, if it's something you'd like long-term, if you'd like people to play these characters for a while, you have to make sure that everybody has their opportunity to shine. Everybody has some form of challenge that they can overcome so they have personal growth and some type of advancement. That they need that opportunity to, to flush out their character. If you are allowing your group to play more than one character, that becomes much, much harder for you as a DM. Because instinctively, in any situation where I've ever had somebody play two characters, they end up favoring one of them. And then that person gets very fleshed out with cool quirks, and that's the one who they always talk as, that's the person who's clearly their primary character, and then they have someone who heals them, or someone who casts the wizard spell, or someone who disarms the traps. Um, making sure that each character, not just each player, has an opportunity to grow and be challenged and see advancement. Um, is, is imperative, and especially in a multiplayer like that, we have multiple people do more than one. Um, so, something I want to touch on. We're going to chat about that more today. But this is basically mostly what the Black Rose looks like, with one exception. Her head, weird for some reason. Head, that's just tilted forward a little bit. I want it to come, maybe looking a little bit more forward. Pose is a little odd, but we'll take it. So that is 
the black rose in her civvies, if you will. Oh, the black rose casual. And we're going to jump into the black rose not casual. That have much other play. So, what I, I'll be honest, at some point I came up with the idea of Dandy being the Black Rose. Um, it was early in the story, but I honestly don't remember what inspired it. I don't know what made me come up with that. I, I just remember at one point saying, yes, this is something I'm going to do, and started moving the story in a way that would allow for that. Uh, she was always meant to exist even before Dandy merged with Menandra to save Draven, fight Draven's brother and stuff. Although I don't think I had it quite extended out how big I was going to make the character yet, but I knew the second personality was going to exist there. Um, not sure how all... Well, I accidentally dyed her feet black in that last picture, but the good news is nobody could see it. Oh, whoops. Fix that real quick. Oops. What did I use? That one? That one. Um, but once, once I had the idea, it's a matter of starting to turn the story that direction. So that way down the road I can say, remember when this, 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 and this happened? And they're like, I remember all those things. When you put them together, they have, they paint a bigger picture. It's just getting them out there in a way that isn't too obvious. I mentioned that already. As a story writer, whether you're writing a book or D&D, &D, mostly I'm talking D&D, &D, but I guess this would work for other things as well. I recommend knowing the ending. Know where you want to start, know where you, where, where you want to end. Doesn't mean you can't change it down the road. But knowing where you want to start and where you end is uh, going to kind of put you on, on the path yourself. How you get there can change many, many, many times. Oh, yeah, Lex, we're changing some clothing here. I know exactly what, what's this. This is that new outfit. Oh, I'm going to have fun with that outfit. That outfit looks... She's not going to wear that, but I can totally think of characters that could use that armor. That is boss. Can't handle it? Well, you know, Lex, I'll tell you, the first few that I ever did... Um, I did on my phone. Then I started working on doing it on my computer. Yeah, I, I used my phone before I ever used anything else. Yeah, that's a great outfit. It's a new outfit they just added. And every time they add stuff, things get rearranged. Thief's reinforced leg armor. I will be changing the colors. A matching set. That looks... Where's my chest piece? Is the app is what I'm using here now? Yes, this is free. I have the paid version, which gives me the option to do a few things that a non-paid person can. Um, but 99% of it is free. Usually you'll find one or two items that will have the word pro next to it, where you have to have the, the monthly membership to have access to that. Um, you have to have the monthly access to have more than one character in a picture. Um, but this app is good for several different things. We're not app this this website, Hero Forge. Not only can you design your characters among multiple different races, and there's hundreds of different items to uh, shape them up. You want color them however you like. Um, you can then, if you want, order it, and they'll print it out as a blank mini that you can paint, or you can pay to have it colored. Obviously, a little bit more. Or you can just pay a few dollars, which is like three bucks or something like that, three ninety nine, and they'll send you the three D print file where you could do it yourself at home. Um, so yeah, you can buy the mini from them or get the pattern to do it yourself. So that's pretty awesome. I upgraded just because I wanted the ability to do this. I will show you. I can find it. I haven't done it in a while. Accessor. Oh, I know where it is. Stage extra this. With an extra, I could grab somebody 
do this. Oh, well, I didn't do it right, but yes. I could grab somebody, Gavis McDermott, import, prink, and I can have two people in one together. Where I can add them and pose them and such like that. So, uh, um, I wanted to be able to do that so I could start doing some duos of, of main characters like Darsh and Dandy or Dandy and Michael, things like that. Did you notice that you can pay to get the 3D model? Yes, uh, the program. I've never done that because I don't have a 3D printer, but yes, you can do that. Uh, if you want to, you go under the buy option, I believe. You can get plastic, premium plastic, colored plastic. That's where, it, obviously, it's forty four ninety nine. This isn't cheap, but it's colored however you make it. Color standees cheaper. They're just like a, a piece of flat plastic with a picture. Bronze is a hundred bucks. Two character download. I'm not sure what that. Oh yeah, this is the this is the downloading two character 3D digital fifteen ninety. So there's a little bit more here. I think there's more options. I think I yeah, but you can get them all schmuckered out. There's a lot of options there, and it's a little bit pricier than when I first started doing it. But the amount of options you have now is horrendous. Yeah, that's. Pretty, pretty boss. We are going to get rid of him, though. <laughs> I don't need him for this one. A.K.A. the parents of the current generation. Who I actually have already. Uh, and we'll take a look at those here in a few minutes. I just have to be careful, because sometimes there's minis painted in that list that you guys haven't met yet. Like, if I was to pull up my list here, right? Do something here. Let everybody close your eyes for a minute. I'm just kidding. Heroes. So if I go down here, right? All these are characters that you've ever seen, right? Darsh, Deacon Firemoon, Deathblade Lucas, Death Knight Ven Marin, Dina, right? So here's all the different characters as I've created them. You'll notice up here, I have duos and secret. <laughs> once, I, well, uh, once I had the paid version, I could make multiple folders. And that made life easier because now I know that people I don't want you to see are on that button. <laughs> so made my life just a little bit easier there <laughs> but uh sometimes i'm uh, you know as a as a as a new version or a new way of creating um interestingly enough something that's changed over the last year or so of, of writing merge worlds because I've, I've made a big switch right i've gone from telling you the story as we've played it to now writing the story that no one's ever heard so I've had to shift some of the ways I did things because, A, I'm now responsible for 100% of the story because nobody else helped participate. Um, so that's something I have to deal with. And number two, I started using the minis, whereas originally, even way back when I first started telling Merged Worlds, I used to use actors and actresses and celebrities' pictures I found to represent what I thought somebody would look at or look like. Um, and then I started finding just character art on the internet and using that. But once I found this and I could really start tailoring who I wanted, um, I am stuck with the limitations of what the website provides me, although it's always adding new stuff. But it allowed me to create a character how I want. So for me, it be a character became a little more alive, especially if I haven't written them yet. Sometimes if I'm creating a character and I'm like, oh, I could give this person an axe. Why do they have an axe? Oh, cool. I can use that as a back a bit of their backstory. Um, the creating of the character here, I have the rough idea of what I want them to be. I get here and I start making it, and here's where they really start to come to life for me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Give them a scar on the eye. Here's we got a scar. Um, probably the best example of that was Mugen. Uh, Mugen is a relatively new character. He's not someone who I've planned for a long time. Uh, he has become a major player in the current storyline and future storylines. Um, he's become a primary character. That is probably the newest one that I've conceived of. I only came up with him six months before he entered into the story. Because for a long time, I needed someone in that slot, and I couldn't figure out how to bring the two worlds together. If you listen to Merge Worlds, how did I get Seraph and Deacon in Serenity to go after and try to save Dina way over here? How do they know she's over here? What will get them out of there that wouldn't bring everybody else? What would cause a division between them and their parents? I was trying to bridge those two locations on the map because for their adventure, that's three weeks to a month away. How in the world would they find out what's going on down here? Nobody's got cell phones, right? I mean, it's something like that. So it enabled me. Mugen was the link. Oh, they ran into Mugen, right? 
uh, Fig recognizes the situation and the fact that they've showed up at that time. And, you know, the gods can't get to us here because we're in dead magic. But still, something caused this to me to get mixed in with something that has to do with my friend Artemis's kid. This is not coincidence. And Fig recognizes that. So he says, okay, I'm going to send my son because if it's the next generation that's being pulled into this, something wants my son involved as well. Now, here's an interesting question. Somebody asked me this the other day in a message. I won't say who, because it's actually somebody relatively new to the channel. But they asked me, is Mugen a touched character? Hanging out in Merge Worlds for a while, you know that a touched character is someone that in the moment of its life's inception, the soul as it forms into existence, a god can be pulled or attracted to that soul. And if they choose, they can touch that soul, unlocking its potential. I mean, that's what all D&D characters are. A regular person, but would have, and for every L intensive purpose, except for some reason, your potential was unlocked, which is why you're the farmer who's now, son of a farmer who's now a knight fighting a dragon on the other side of the world. They asked, is it possible that Mugen could be, since he's in a non-magic zone? And I said, yes, it is possible. I haven't said whether he is or not. The reasons for that, right? But yes, because... When his soul sparks into being, it's not happening in there. It's happening in the separate plane of existence from which souls go and come before and after death. Um, how the planes work, gods and demons and all of that kind of stuff, is something I've not gone... Hey, Tom, how you doing? It's not something that I've gone into great detail in Merged Worlds. I know how it works. And it is very different than traditional Dungeons and Dragons. And I did not want to complicate the story as I'm telling it to you all. Because again, a lot of you people know version of D&D. Especially most of you probably know 5th edition. Some of you played older than that. Um, and some of you don't play D&D at all. You're just here for the story. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't throwing all sorts of extra stuff on top of that. That wasn't important to the story. It will become important to the story. And I can assure you that as this goes on, how the heavens and the hells and the demons and gods and their relationships and how gods work and all that kind of thing, uh, we're going to get into a lot more detail into that as the story goes. Um, as the characters themselves begin to learn these things, so will the audience. And I felt that the best way to introduce that type of thing in. Hey, what do you got going on over here? This is the Thief outfit. It's actually a very good one. Thief's reinforced leather chest armor. It's, you know, protects you everywhere, but it's still relatively nimble enough. Plenty of pouches for picks and things that you might need. A little bit of protection. Um, and I, I think that's the route I'm going to go with Rose. I don't want to do that. I meant to go to feet. Feet, though, I don't remember. If there, I don't think there's a matching technical pair of shoes for this. So it's a matter of finding a shoes that I like. Cleats? No, I'm not giving them cleats. Do I want to give them cleats? No, that looks silly. <laughs> I, I lean towards boots very often. I feel like more people wear boots than shoes in a medieval-style situation. And I think that's accurate. Everything from a Western all the way back to knights and... Everybody always is wearing boots or sandals, right? Nobody's ever wearing high tops. Yeah. I don't... For shoes, I almost always use slippers. <sighs> Heavy tundra boots. Yeah, I just feel boots. Unless, again, people who like clerics and stuff, people who are hanging out in temples, I usually do some type of slippers or sandals for them. Because that just makes sense, you know? Orcish boots, bra. Uh, desert armor. Big plate, Roman sand. Traveler's boots. Ooh, laced and buckled boots. Well, that fits perfectly with the buckles. I think that's actually probably from that set. This armor set was designed by, submitted by Rob. Yeah, this is for the same set. Nice. Okay, that works out well. One last glance. Just make sure there's nothing else down here I like better. 
Sweep. Samurai. Again, I do have access to a few things that aren't in the free version. That is cool. All right, I like that. So, next is going to be gloves, right? The thieves have got to wear gloves. Not those, though. We are going to go down to the bottom to see if it lists any thief stuff down here. I don't think I want something that completely covers the hand. I think I want something that's more of a along those lines. Keeping your bones in place while they heal. I mean, that's obviously not the kind of, you know, something that uh, might cover some of the arm, maybe even fingerless gloves of some kind. Chunky metal bracelets. Stone cuffs. Oh, that's interesting. That's a new one. Braided. That could be symbolic. I remember. See, I see these things in the back of my head. I'm like, how can I use this next time? Leaf cup. That's for hippies. Hippie fairies. All fairies are hippies. It's a rule. Kidding about that. Uh, much tougher than shoes. We all travel many times. Exactly. That's what I was thinking as well. People who live in the castle and so on and so forth. Even the kids of the... Teenagers and stuff. People walking around town will probably still even have boots. Okay. Not liking any of these. It's a little bit too big. There's fingerless gloves up here, which is probably what I'm going to go for. It didn't have the spikes. Okay. Definitely don't want the spikes. There they are. Not quite pleased with how those look. May have to go gloveless. I think I'm going to go gloveless. Hello, Bonic. Good day, mon frere. All right. Get back in here. This is not the hair she's going to be rocking. Now that I know that this hair exists, this is a perfect how she would tie her hair up. Instead of a top knot, tie it up and tight where people are not going to be able to uh, get a grip on it. World's Rolls Logan. Which are Excellent. Too many splinters. Ouch, bro. Careful now. Don't hurt yourself. Homie, don't play that. Oops. See, to me, with her hair pulled back like that, that really gives some of the uh, the attitude to her look. Yeah, it's, it, that is one downside of the site. You can shrink and make them thinner and fatter, but their hands always stay the same size. I can even make their head bigger or smaller. Their hands always stay the same size. Frustrating. All right, let's see. I think I have an idea. I wasn't sure if I was going to give her any type of head thing, but I thought about just like a thing to kind of help tie her hair back. Better once they're colored. Oh, very much so. Many of these will look much better when they're colored. Even a, even a headband might not be bad. That, conf that conflicts with the hair. Like I could very easily see her with something like this. You know what I mean? Hiding who she really is. Or are they, Tom? That's excellent. Excellent. Shadow. That's, I don't like that one. That one hides her face a little better, but I kind of like to be able to see her face. Tempted on the hoods. There's another one I'm tempted to try. If I, if I... Not this one, but that's funny. The Black Rose. Horrible, but not quite what I'm looking for. I like the other hood better. Head scarf, not so much. This is a cool one. Check this out. You can actually do this. You can make them into like a keychain or a Christmas ornament. It's specifically designed for you able to do that. If you did want to 3D print this out and hang it, have yourself a merged world's tree kind of concept, right? I like that they add stuff like that. That's just, that's dandy. We might have found what's wrong. They have some really good detailed helmets, and I love the way these look, but I hate that in most of them I can't see the character's face. I want you to be able to see the character's face. Although this is very much. Like what Michael was wearing when he was a tattered hex weave hood. I don't know. 
Yeah, there's some face masks and gear we're going to look at as well. I want to take a look and see what we got there. I did think about doing something like this, but again, I hate not being able to see her face. But I have a feeling that you wouldn't see her face. That's specifically something she would not allow. She's out running around. She, the last thing she wants is for people to know who she really is. Did that and went back to the hood I was more interested in. See, that I like a little bit better. That I could picture the rose feeling in. Like that one better. I'm going to make her. This is what some people see before they die. <laughs> Sometimes if she takes this off and you're not a thorn, you are going to die. <laughs> you don't get to. And, and people know this, right? You'd imagine they'd know this. She walks up and they're like, you're, but you're the, but you're the, oh, I'm screwed, aren't I? You're like, yeah, yeah, you're not getting out of here, buddy. <laughs> All right, so let's look at some gear now. Like I said, this character I knew was going to be definitely involved with most stuff. So when it comes, ooh, let's look at the new weapons. A cane sword. Well, now that's kind of cool. A uh, cane sword with, that's just the sheath. Okay. Nightly pouch. I like that. All right. I love it when they add new stuff. Okay. So, much like Dandy, I always intended her to be a dagger fighter. Um, a, oh, wait. She got a ring on still? Okay, good. I always, I always wanted her to be a uh, knife fighter, where she never uses the hoop pack. Because at this small, she could be or take, taken as a, as a halfling, maybe even a large gnome. At this size, definitely you could tell she's of a smaller race, but of which one, it'd be hard to tell. Check this business out. They've added these decks of cards, and you can go in and put any of the cards, like Queen of Hearts, Ace of Spades on it now. They added that, and they added a bunch of runes you can add onto the shields now which we may look at <clears throat> designing another character here later today as well. I should mention Hero Forge in no way is a sponsor of this video or stream or this channel, but by God, I wish they were. <laughs> Their stuff is amazing and I use it all the time. I said even the free version of it, but to me, I got, for someone who's going to use it a lot, 100% recommend the paid version of it. Just because being able to put the two characters together, if nothing else. All right, so I got to look and see what kind of knives. That's what Dandy's flame knife looked like, but I never felt she'd use the same kind of knife. And some of these knives look bigger because she's smaller. <clears throat> when I see her here, I thought she was a halfling. And when you take the top knot down, she definitely... A kender, a kender is basically a halfling in 99% of the stuff. In Dragonlance, there is no halflings. Kender take that spell. So in many ways, they're very close to identical. How would you make lizard folk more interesting? You know, Tom, that's a great question, and I'm happy to answer it. If you have questions, throw them at me. Now, I, my question, just to clarify, are your lizard men a uh, character in the story? Are they a group of people that the characters are going to team up with, fight against? Are they the big bad? What is their role in the story? Or is it just like a city they go through on their way where they're going? Um, I, I would ask that just so I could point things in the right direction. A lot of knives in here, and I really like those ones. They're a little bigger than what Dandy would normally use. It'd almost be a short sword for her, but the, the design of them is really nice. I love the two claws. Um, an elegant dagger. We're going to look and see what else is in here, but uh, they have added... Ooh, assassin's daggers. Well, now that looks good, too. That's too Bowie knife for me. The Assassin's Daggers, I like those a lot. I love these weapons, but I've already given them to somebody else. Brass Knuckles with Spikes. Uh, half Dragons must be called Dragonborn in other versions of their deity. Um, well, Half Dragons don't exist. That's in most other versions of D&D, to be honest with you. Um, they started popping up as secondary types 
of um, characters in the very early D and D. Dragon half dragon people were just one of the forms a dragon could take. Um, the half dragon, the concept that some human or elf shagged a dragon always was a little outside of the realm of what they considered a possibility. But as time moved on, obviously that changed. Um, but then they became dragon born. One of the first hardcore dragon type people that I ever came across was when Dragonlance came out. It was very early in Dragonlance, they created the Draconians. And Draconians, no one knew where they came from, but there were armies of them, and there were different types of dragons, and or dragon people. And some had wings, some didn't, some had different skills. And each one, when it died, something different happened. One of them, if it dies, it turn, its body takes on the shape of the person who killed it. Uh, an auroch, which is the hardest one, the wizard one, it turned into a ball of lightning and acid that spit fire for another 20 hit points you had to do. Um, so things like that. Um, only to find out in this, I'm, I'm, if I'm ruining this 35-year-old story for you, I apologize. Uh, but when the, it ends up coming out that uh, what happened is that they stole all the good dragon's eggs and said they were keeping them hostage, when instead they were corrupting them into making draconians. So Orok was a gold, were the gold draconians. So of the five primary metallic dragons, which was gold, silver, copper, bronze. I'm missing one. Brass, brass dragons. Uh, that's where you got your Orok, Sivok, uh, Boz Draconian, Bozak. You know, I mean, that's where all those things came from. Um, and that was really the first dragon. That was their origin. They, they, they were literally dragon eggs that were corrupted. So, um, again, the classic dragonborn thing just really wasn't a thing. And it started to come out after that that I started seeing more and more of that thing pop up as supplements or NPC races that would sometimes come out with different adventures. Long before it ever became a playable character. Be a city they pass through. Potentially could be enemies if interacted with in a certain way. Okay. Um, next clarification, quite, little clarification question. Is your city of lizard folk um, naturally an alignment? Naturally good, naturally evil. Or like a human city, it could just be a mix of everything. You know? Um that would again because again before i start pointing things making them interesting i want to make sure i'm providing them interest in the way that you're wanting stuff to be right um but if you're wanting to do something interesting you're going to make the 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 a city of lizard folk interesting couple different ways I could see it, depending on the races you have in your party. Maybe the lizard folk originally were uh, a group of people who fled lands where they were terrorized or abused by the same race as one of your characters. So they're overwhelmingly nervous and uncomfortable when this character with the party shows up and it says, hey, I am here to help, but that race has a history of oppressing the lizard folk. Um, one option. Uh, second option, you pick something a little on toward of one of the characters um, and have them fit all the requirements, either through the way they look, the way they act, or an action that they take, where they appear to be someone of a prophecy. Or, you know, many years ago when the city was found, it was said that one day a blah, blah, blah would arrive and do this, pull the sword from the stone. Like, don't do that, that's, but, you know, things like that. And they accidentally trip and find out somehow they become embroiled in some type of prophecy or old tale um, that they now have to either complete or find a way to get unentangled from. Um, so that can both of those could have different effects. The first one it makes people very the lizard folks very curious, nervous, uh, very uh, suspicious of the race that oppressed them. Uh, the second one could be the other way around. They start treating this one person like an icon, like a, a hero that's you know been promised for generations and is now putting pressure on the rest of the group to, oh my God, now we have to, to do this. Now, you really want to screw with the lizard, folks. Do both of them. And have it be the same person. This is a group of lizard folk who generations upon generations ago was oppressed by this race of people. What do you got in your party? An elf, a dwarf, a minotaur, whatever. 
pick something that if, if all goes well you have one of usually a little easier that way say okay here's this race i'm gonna say a minotaur this minotaur are the ones that beat up these lizard folks and slave them and whatever the case was and they finally left so now this minotaur shows up and they're all nervous and they want to get rid of him as quickly as possible and then the minotaur does something accidentally that shows that person taking the first step of being the prophesized one. So now the lizard folks are torn. Some of the lizard folk are, are viewing this person as this is our savior. Doesn't matter that he's a minotaur. He's our savior. He's going to lead us out of this bad time or the dark force that's affecting this, keeping these people trapped. Maybe this evil wizard, an evil cleric, some underground cult, something that's affecting the city and that's been affected, cursed the land where the food won't grow. And it's really because of a plague god, whatever the storyline is. But now this is the guy who's going to get them out of that trouble. Well, at the other side of the city, 50% of your city are like, we will never trust this dude because his people treated our people like crap for hundreds of years. So he's put in the middle of a city that almost will break into civil war over this one character. And all they did was trip and accidentally knock the sword out of the stone. You know what I mean? And now they're embroiled in this entire storyline you can build the city up you can have the bad guy like I said be a single person maybe there's a curse on the town and the minotaur has to be the one to save it it's not probably a minotaur i'm just using him as for the filling the void of one of your characters um and this gives the whole party a chance to play just because one of them is the chosen one it the chosen one and his allies you know kind of thing so they're all viewed in the same way it's like half of them are like oh my god you're traveling with this Heroic Minotaur, you must be awesome too, or we don't trust you at all. You're friends with a Minotaur and we can't trust them. And it really splits the city up. Um, this could also, uh, you could throw in a situation where you're like, okay, well, now you've got, maybe there's a king and queen of the lizard, right? And is it a good king and queen or is it an evil king and queen? If it's an evil king and queen who's benefiting from this negative curse that's keeping people entrapped, they may not be too excited for the Minotaur and their friends to get there. So now you've got worry about assassins, political intrigue, uh, people who are being sent to either pay them off or chase them out of town or assassinate them. Or you have the flip side of that. Now you have the king and queen who are like, yes, we want our people to be saved. You are the one. We will give you whatever help you need. But maybe they have a son or a daughter who's very racist against this race. Or maybe the, the Senate or the, the Lords or something are very against it, the Merchant Lords. Something that's now bringing politics head to head because the King and Queen are backing them up. But this other faction who has always had a strenuous relationship with the King and Queen already disagrees. So they're having to get this problem solved before the whole city breaks into, inter, in, into war or civil war or something of that nature. So just by existing, they're causing the problems, but only they have a chance to fix them but they're on a timetable. That's just what off the top of my head for, for lizard folk. You could do that. Might make them a little more inter a little interesting. And I mean, I just basically threw an entire adventure at you. I'm not saying you should do all that, but you could pick if there's a couple little pieces in there you found would fit into whatever you're already planning. Hope it can help. So, I have a bad habit of immediately just jumping right into it. See, I love scenarios like that. I love when people come by and they're like, hey... I have an idea for this kind of character, but how could I work them into a story? Well, one moment while I write you a novel. Blah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for sure. So anyways, I went on and on and on. Maybe the group against the party member is actually the true cause to be hated. Very much so. Yeah, and, so, and that's a great idea. What if the bad faction who's against it, right? But what if it's not? What if it's the king and queen who are wanting this to be benefited because they're trying to set the world and the thing into chaos to eliminate their enemies. And it's the king and queen that actually were the turrets. But you're playing them off like, no, we're the ones who want to back you up. Because they want that anarchy. Because they don't think the heroes can really do it. And it's a way of causing civil war and finally get a way of getting rid of their people. But the opposite fo focus, the merchant lords or a baron or something like that or a cousin of the king could be the exact same thing where they're like, oh, no, we're going to help you. Yeah, I, I back up the king and queen. But in reality, I'm the one making money off all this horrible curse. I'm going to make sure I mess with them. Maybe it's an NPC who ends up joining the party because he's such the one who backs them up the most. But he's really in there just to mess stuff up and make it harder for them. Different ways you could take it. Rose with a heart knife. She just smacks people over the head with a big heart. Does that seem scary enough? 
I can have her bunk people with the big chicken leg. Little ham hocks in here. I could have sworn there was a couple more knives, but I guess there is not. Ooh, see, I should have. If I'd have, if I'd have put her into a situation where she was known for using like these bladed ring things, that's a futuristic hoop. But something along those lines, you know, that'd be pretty boss. Something more like this. I'm not as big on those designs, but something like that. It could be. Who fought with that? Is that Xeno Warrior Princess? Had like some type of ring she threw at people. Back up to the knife. I definitely... I'm going to go with the assassin knives. I like those the best. Well, the elegant dagger or the assassin knife. I think... I like those. They're just too long. Uh, Let's see. Chakrams are amazing. I agree. Have an actual rose in her hand. You know what? I think when I'm done this, I'm going to go back to the uh, first rose I made and put a rose in her hand. Because that would seem... A little bit more to me like she's the the other one is the talking negotiating this is the one part of rose that gets stuff done uh man just listening you come up with the lizard people story is so interesting well thank you um and prompts like that things like that that that's 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 merge worlds right there that that's a, what you just said there is is a merged worlds 100 percent because that's how i get stories and almost always from listening to music driving in the car listening to music, a song will come on the radio, and a line or a verse will give me a situation that pops in my head. Oh, that'd be cool. What if I did this? Oh, I could add this. But then there's these people. And then everything spirals out of control very quickly. I get all these ideas out in my head. And then I have to like, okay, well, that's, all, that's enough. This one. Take this one. Those two will go together. I do that, I need this to make this one work. And that's how I that's where my storyline comes from. I pick out of there. And then sometimes I get all done and it's two lines. And I'm like, I need something for the middle that brings these two together. That's what Mugen was. Two storylines of what was happening, and I needed something that linked them together. And Mugen did that. Um Dagger and a rose, huh? Hmm. I don't think there's a single rose. If there was, I'd be all over that. But I think they don't have a single rose. Yeah. They unfortunately don't have a single rose. But that would have been cool. But I might they might have one I could put on the ground in front of her, though. That might work. Grab the other assassin. Oh, she still got them. Okay. How'd you get Mugen's name? Oh, that was easy. He's named after Moog. So, uh, I'm not sure how far you got into the, the early parts of the story, but Moog was a character that Fig saw as a son. Um, and so when he actually had a son, in honor and memory of the, the first boy that was that he has always talked to Mugen as this was your older brother Moog, um, was kind of immediately where that came from. It was meant to be, here's Mugen, but capable. You know what I mean? Moog was this good-natured little guy who got embroiled into some bad stuff and had one moment, one good moment, uh, to change the world. And Mugen, who's raised and trained and can fight and much more capable of looking after himself, still feels like he's always trying to find that moment for himself. Um, which is always meant to be one of the things in the back. He wants to, even though his father has no reservations about his capabilities, obviously, said sent him out, you know, he sent him out into a world all by himself. He obviously thinks he can handle himself. Um, it's Mugen that feels he hasn't proven himself to his father yet. Not in a, I hate you or you don't accept me, but in a, I need to do better. I need to show you that I'm I'm capable of being the next you. And so he will very likely, that'll be a motivation that might get him involved in things that he shouldn't that could cause trouble for the groups. How did you get Moog's name then? Originally, not sure. Uh, I'll be honest, back then I don't remember. Um, a lot of times it's just me thinking. Um, let me see. Uh... 
sitting here right now. Like a lot of the names, and I've said this before, a lot of names that I use in the game, um, in, in merged worlds and just things in general, are real names or words that I come across. Uh, in my job as working at a call center, all day long I look at hundreds and hundreds of names. And a lot of names that are last names make really cool fantasy first names. Um, I don't think I read a character named Moog, but uh, Moog falls under what I call the the uh, the, the Dunderbrain category, right? Ogres, orcs, usually. Goblins sometimes, even minotaurs, have those very short one or two syllable names, right? Darsh. <laughs> you know, it's one of the... Or even Craig. You know, it's, it's kind of those. It's like our names are simple, but our last names are way more complicated for minotaurs because that's where our genealogy, that's where all of our history and ancestry comes from. So a lot of times I look for very short names for people like that, even though I didn't name Darsh. Moog is the same kind of thing. He comes from a race of people who can't count to two. They're just not a smart group. Long, complicated names wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't remember them. Moog, Gob, Gord, you know, things like that is what I would expect them to name each other. Uh, just because it's easier to remember short little silly words like that. I'm pretty sure that's where I was thinking when I was coming up with his name. Would be a good name for the Flintstone style Eric? Very likely. Could be. All right, so now that I've got this, now I need side items. I got two knives. I'm going to need two sheaths, right? Let's see if we can find the knife sheaths. Should be in here. I always I need a knife one. Let's see if we do this. One that's already closed. Discipline of dagger sheaths. All right, let's just do sheath. Really? Really fit the angle. Oh, they really don't have a lot. I mean, I guess I could use those, but they're not really straight. A little disappointing. Those are too big. So. Or I could just give her more knives. Also, not a bad idea. <clears throat> Can't make many of those smaller. I here's something I want. I want them to give you the ability to put a boot knife. I'd love to have boot knives. I'd love it if they could give you a way to put a knife or something on the on the side of their foot. It doesn't, sadly. All right. So since sheath doesn't work, we're gonna do it a little differently. Instead of sheath, we're gonna put rogue stuff. No, honey, I don't want your coupon right now. A uh, small nightly pouch. I do kind of like the new nightly pouches. A couple little nightly pouches on the side to hold her stuff. And then let's see what we can do for sheaths on the back. Not going to use any type of cloak or robe. Ooh, that's a new cape. You know, that almost like her in a cape. I almost like her in a cape. Problem with base items, you can't lift them off the ground. Is, is the only real issue there. Um, see, I'd like to have knives. She's knives. She should have knives. Because Dandy has knives strapped across her stomach. She's got six or is it four? It's four and then two more on her belt. I'm actually not horribly against that. The only problem I have with the cape and the hood is that this looks much more textured than that. But I can work with that. Rugged... Oh, they've added some new ones. Oh, boss. Is the Black Rose? I'm just kidding. Oh wow! You don't take candle, so that's not going to work. Let's look at back items. Maybe if I put some sheaths on her back, with her being small, they'll look. That almost looks the right size. That would look better. I'd have to get rid of the robe. I, I don't the the cape is a problem. Got rid of the cape. See that that works for me with the size of the daggers. That's almost right. Yeah, I I, I follow them. I just have a bad habit of not going to Instagram as often as I should. 
But I, 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 I genuinely like that. I mean, I hate... Oops. As much as I liked the cape, I think I like that better. Let's see. I haven't even picked the pose yet, so this may all change once I pick the pose. So let's let's deal with that a little bit so we can see. I get, this is a great example of how you can see that I'm doing this much different. The last one was easy to knock out. This one's taking much more. Putting her in a bit more of an action. I'd love to be able to put her like peering down off a roof, kind of Batman-esque. See, if I do that, the sheath is visible. And I like that. Like, you can see where that is. Okay, let's see. That's also a good pose for her. I use that too. Superman! No, I don't want to use that. That's the cocky one, and Rose is not cocky. If anything, she's over... Or she, I mean, she's extreme, perfectly confident. Right? Um, nom, nom, nom. That's not a bad one either, but it kind of, I feel like it takes a little bit away from her. Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Huh. Well, let's take a look at the stage real quick. What options do we have for the stage that would work well with this? I don't want to do money again. I just did that on the last one. I'd like to be a little bit more different than that. Pie! Rope would work if it looks like she just climbed up there. That would work if she... You know, the person would already be dead. I mean, the rope I'm leaning towards... Knives in the ground also aren't bad. I don't know why it's going gold on me. That's probably better. Knife knife could work. I can do two. So the rope and a knife could feasibly work. I'm looking, but I'm not seeing a flower. Yeah, I don't think that there was a flower. Or I could add another person, but I'm not looking. How to survive a sandstorm in Conan? Shelter, but a near deep river. Yeah, if you can dive underwater, carry, get yourself the uh, underwater breathing helmet. You'll never have to worry about it again. Sit under the water and let it ride itself out. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I like the rope. So the rope makes sense to me if she's sneaking on to get onto a plane. I kind of like the dagger as well, but I'd like to have the dagger in the middle of the rope. Too big. And that could work. One moment while I fix something stupid. <laughs> All right, so I kind of like that. What I can do with this. So if I was to get into pose, advance. I have so many things I can adjust. Love that they're adding more and more stuff to adjust. That's exactly the look I wanted for. Like the rope's up there and she's trying to snag it. Yes, I'm okay with that. I like that. Now, let's look at her head. Only problem is looking down here, you can't really see her face real well. Just a smidge. Oh, here's a good, let's see what we got here. I want to know more about familiars. Excellent, excellent topic. Let's talk about familiars. Why not? And I haven't said this today, and I probably should. Hey, guys, if you don't mind, it'd be awesome if you click the like button. 
I need to be better about saying that in these streams, but it definitely helps the channel out if you don't mind hitting like if you're enjoying yourself, of course. Um, so familiars, sure, we can chat about familiars. So a familiar, again, grain of salt, everything I talk about is from a second edition or specifically merged world's point of view. In second edition, find familiar is a first level wizard spell. It does not exist for clerics. And because for clerics, your god will send you an animal friend if he wants you to have one. Um, but for wizards, it's a first level spell. Um, the type, much like the future versions of the spell, the type of animal that comes to you is based very highly on where you are, right? If you're in a forest, you get a forest thing. You're in a swamp, you get a swamp thing. And just kind of thing how we're not swamp thing from the comics. You can't have him as a familiar, but an animal from the swamp, uh, is doable. Desert, you could get a scorpion. I mean, there's just different stuff like that. Turd to have a scorpion. But then that creature comes to you. Um, now, depending on the version of it and your DM, what the familiar can do uh, can differ. Um, very often, you can see through a familiar's eyes or hear through a familiar's ears. Usually not both at once. Usually it's one or the other. Um, what about druids or are there druids in second edition? There are druids. Druids historically don't have an animal companion. Druids can turn into an animal. That's, that's their animal thing. They bear forms and things like that. But a ranger automatically gets a familiar when it reaches a certain level. And again, it's going to come from a specific type of... It may have something to do with the area you're in, but that one can be a little bit looser. Um, it may come from a greater distance to find you in that situation. Uh, or it could, it, depending on your DM, you could save the animal and it becomes your familiar. Um, but in either case, when you're a wizard, which is where it's most commonly found, once you have the familiar, you can do the things I just talked about, like see through eyes, hear through things, so on and so forth. Um, rangers don't have that ability at all. Or clerics normally, if they get, get a familiar sent to them, they don't either, unless it's some type of animal-based goddess that would justify that type of thing, god or goddess. Um, the problem with a familiar is you have to take care of it. Um, and even if you take care of it perfectly, eventually it's going to die. Almost any familiar will die of old age before you. Um, and when your familiar dies, you permanently lose a constitution ability point. There's no way to get it back. So that's, that's the deterrent that keeps a lot, because you become a part of you, you're merged, you're linked. Um, so that's one of those things where when you're choosing, do I want to do this? I am definitely taking that gamble that if in the first adventure gets killed by whatever we're fighting, I lose a point in my constitution. In classes like wizards where constitution may not be your prime stat, losing one could make a big difference for you. Um, sorcerers exist. So, no, not in the way you know them. In ways second edition mages worked, and I've never held to this. Uh, you have specialists, uh, and you have mages. A specialist is someone who chooses a specific school of magic and can only ever cast that school. Um, I had my first mage ever was a conjurer, uh, meaning that the best I could ever hope for, if I got all the way to being able to cast ninth level spell, was 17 spells. Because it's a small group. Powerful ones when you get to the high level, but there's not a lot of spells to choose from. But as a specialist, you can't cast anymore. It was too limiting. I didn't like that. Uh, illusionist uh, is, was a specific gnome specialization. DM warranted, of course. DM could change that. But primarily it was meant for halfling, or halflings or gnomes, I believe. Gnomes would be illusionists. Um, there were no warlocks. Any of that stuff didn't exist. But a wizard could learn anything. But if someone who was a specialist, their spells hit a lot harder. Lasted longer. Might be able to cast them faster. Bigger duration, bigger area of effect. If it's a damaging spell, it does way more damage. Because you're so in tune with that type of spell, you just do it better but you can only cast those kind of spells. Now, that's you personally. It doesn't mean you can't cast 
other spells off of a scroll. You're not memorizing, you're not learning those. I can use magic items and artifacts that do other stuff, for sure. But for me to cast a spell from memory, it had to be my specialist. And I found that too limiting, so I normally didn't do that route. Um, we just went with the other, which is just the classic mage, where you can learn just about any spell. Um, but again, I've always used the spell point process. You'd never have to pick your spells at the beginning of the day. That's stupid. <laughs> All right, time to start col coloring this little girl. I've been chatting to you guys. Let me see a ranger who's familiar as a giant wolf. We've, I've done that. Dire wolf or some huge four-legged thing can ride on like a mountain and find by a side. By we did have a wolf for a ranger for a side adventure I did. Uh, where it was just me and the young lady who did... Um, who played Dandy and Mercy. Well, the other young lady was off to school for like six months. Played Darsh and them. We just did a side adventure, her and I. And she played a ranger who uh, had a huge wolf. She was a, a full-sized elf, so she never rode it. But if she'd have been a kender, she could have definitely done it. So obviously we're going to go black with all this gear. We all know that. Blacks and grays. Sure, let's get to it. Do -do -do. So now, first things first, let's get over here. We're going to grab the fleshy bits, and we're going to get rid of the th fingernail polish, because don't wear bright colors when you're out killing things. We're going to go to black leathers. I rogue black. Here's what I'm going to do. So most of the gear is going to be black. The straps, I'm going to do darker. So all those little belts are going to be darker than the rest of this. Sure. Same thing on these, the pouches. That. There's a black metal that I'm going to use for some of this other stuff. And Danny paint her nails? Oh, yeah. Kender love colors. So she's got earrings and all that kind of stuff. Lipstick. They wear... Kender historically wear very bright, flashy clothing. And sometimes it just clashes. Like bright reds and greens and blues. Uh, Kender are known for having very exotic colors in their clothing. The clothing itself isn't cut all weird. It's regular clothing. Although they have always have a bunch of pouches for all the things that they find. <laughs> see does it stand out now the buckles I'm still I'm gonna make a very dark gray I'm not gonna make them black same with the metal pieces on the edge of the knives uh, very much so. In fact, there's a point for you guys. Michael did, and Michael and Dandy didn't start wearing the hunter gear until after Rose was made. Um, if you think back on the adventure, they just dressed pretty much normally. I mean, Michael still had, he had like a black suit. He had the first leather thing that he wore when he first came back. But the modern version of the hunter suit was designed after Rose. Here. That's... That, I missed that. Those. Um, but yes, very much so. And actually, that would help that would help Rose out in the long run if you think about it, because if she does take over Dandy and they're out traveling, that type of gear, but throwing on a mask and a hood, would work very, very well for Rose to do what she needs to do. Keep her hidden, but then still give her that protective dark gear, which they wear the dark gear so as not to attract undead normally. Hey, Miss Smashley, how goes it? We are working on Rose today. Putting the black Rose together happy unless dark metal that one's darker i'm gonna make the blade <coughs> i 
Oops, I did not do that. Tornado of coals. <laughs> Got home from dancing lessons. Hey, how's that going? What's your opinion on Wild Magic and Vic Sissy 2A? Oh, yeah, Wild Magic's 100% there. That's what Petal is. Petal's a Wild Mage, and so was Nylat Firemoon, of the original, one of the original two characters. Uh, Wild Magic came out in second edition and was introduced through the Tome of Magic. Uh, second, I don't think the first edition had a tome. I may be wrong on that, but I know second edition Tome of Magic is the first place I ever saw Wild Magic pop out. There are Wild Magic zones and Wild Magic stuff. All over Merged Worlds. Look at that. I missed those buckles right there. What a, what a poor job I'm doing. Leather for that. Darker black metal. Pieces. Oh, there's another pouches I missed. Good lord, so many pouches. All right, let me look. Did I miss any other pouches? Dang it. <laughs> yep, there's another one. Damn pouches. <laughs> oh, God. I missed a huge thing. I got to get rid of that. I got to get rid of that purple. Can't keep the purple. It's meant to be the darker black. Oh, I kind of like this. Darker than the other stuff. Like that though. Okay. Uh, I gotta know how the rose handles the bright nail polish. Rose is perfectly fine with the nail. Rose, from a usability standpoint, when she's trying to be sneaky and do stuff, she may just throw on gloves or that kind of thing. But I don't think Rose Rose has no problem dressing up pretty should she need to. I'm sure that she's infiltrated locations. You gotta remember, when her and Michael are out traveling the world before they settle down in Serenity, they traveled around the world hunting undead. Um, I can tell you, here's an interesting thing for you. Um, one of the, uh, that's when she, that, that time period, out traveling the world uh, before they settle down with Petal is where the, where the thorns came into play. <sighs> hiding it part yeah gloves would probably be the easiest but very often there's thief oil put on your face and stuff it's stick it's not sticky but it sticks to you it doesn't wash off easily and a lot of times you'll put that on anything you don't want to reflect light or even your skin to hide it it's actually in the guidebook all right so now that i've got that for the actual metal stuff i'm going to do like a darker gray i want it to be a gray but i don't want it to be reflective this is going to be the... Oh, there's a purple crotch. Let me throw that in there real quick. The buttons and the buckle, buckles are going to be definitely a different gray. Someone who wants to hide in shadows. The more consistent she can get, the better. Ah, I just colored the pants. I knew I was going to do that. My life is a challenge, I tell you. Let's see. Already got that one. Those. That button, but I missed that black. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Should work well. Um, uh, 100 Travels would be a good time and place to pick up those. That would be a little tours if I went. Oh, very much so, right? And I can tell you that each thorn has a story. A rose story about why they are overwhelmingly both loyal and in living fear of rose. They don't serve her just out of fear. They primarily serve her out of Loyalty or debt, love, whatever the case may be, but not fear. But each person, how they came to be a thorn, was of their own little special situation. Right on there. 
All right, so I like that. I like the multi-tones of, of black and gray. The leather I chose is more of a gray, but it's a darker one. All I got to do is mess with this rope, which 100% I'm going to make dark as well, but not as dark. And the, the, the goal of the knife and the rope would be is to signify I throw the knife instead of a grappling hook, because there's no grappling hook. You need grappling hook. So the color of this would very much match like the other daggers she uses. That's obviously a different knife because I don't have a choice in the matter. Uh, let's go back with this. Whoops! Somebody missed the bottom of the shoe. Whoops. Need to put the floor down. And the floor being a rotting harbor style wood. Uh, let's see. Uh, so here's another question. A few times that one eye was dealing with Thieves Guild Wars. Would the rose have anything to do with that? I can't remember if those time frames match up. Excellent. Excellent question. Okay. So, when she first started hanging with one eye, they were searching for the stones. Rose did not exist yet. Dandy and one eye became friends. They were loyal to each other. Um, and then one eye called for her help, her and Michael, when they came to the Were Panther section, if you remember that part of the story. At that point, Rose existed. And at the end of that adventure, they left allies and one eyes never popped up again. In the story, I can tell you that in Paxwall, he is still the thieves, head of the Thieves Guild, well known, although he's never been directly involved in their story that we know of. Clarify that. I've never brought him up at all. Uh, but he is still the current Thieves Guild leader in Paxawal. Um, the Black Rose did not have any wars in Paxawal. The Black Rose took over the Thieves Guild of the Kingdom of Firemoon, which one I had no dealings with. He's thousands of miles from there. He could care less what's going on over there unless it somehow affects his bottom dollar. Um, you could understand how Rose might be more interested because A... She has free reign of Fire Moon, as Dandy, a place they've visited before. Secondly, she can portal there and be there in like a week or so, right? There's a portal a couple of days from Serenity. There's another portal several days from Fire Moon. So it's not hard. She can get to Kingdom of Fire Moon way faster than she'd get to Paxawal. Even though there's much more trading with Paxawal uh, on the non thieves set, just between Serenity and Paxawal itself, regular caravans. Um, there has been no known issue of the Black Rose having any issues or conflict with uh, One Eye. That answers that question. Is he out there and gonna and, and play his part again one day? Yeah, we haven't seen the last of One Eye. He's out there, I promise. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I also like the sh shadow. I didn't. I don't never realized they did shadows before. Yes, he, he did have a problem with the Thieves Guild stuff. Um, so part of that implication, and I, 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 I led into it somewhat, the implication there wasn't as, it wasn't that other Thieves Guilds were taking over, but assassins and such were coming through. That was always meant to be Oromon's interference. Because uh, all that stuff kept happening before big issues with Oromon. Uh, when he ended up fleeing, it was right before... Uh, Mar Mercy and Darsh ended up going into Ormon for them. So uh, that was Ormon trying to get a foothold in Paxawal for what was going to be future attacks and such. Because remember, they took Pandora's box back. That happened a long time ago. Someone managed to get the box back. It's one of the nine boxes of Pandora um, that was being hidden in there as well. Uh, yeah, so we'll some of that will pop up again, but yeah, I tried to link that. That's where we had the Black Horn and the, the thieves and assassins that were also messing with Kronayar's Minotaur Kingdom, uh, Thorman, and Paxwell. That was all part of that big war invasion thing they were jumping in. Okay, the uh, if I'm at high sign of the ring, uh, shrink down to more manageable size. Gotcha, ring of enlarging, like that. Can't remember. All right. So, what do you guys think of the rose? I know she's like very like multi-toned black, but to me, that's dandy on the I'ma go kill people or deal with stuff personally kind. 
let's see. Black Rose. So for those of you who weren't here earlier. Black Rose Casual. This was her in the outfit she was wearing when she met with Artemis. She, 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 it, 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 she would be wearing clothing that was single tone. Doesn't have to be black when she's just dressing as herself. She wears the darker colors and black stuff when she's working. But if she's just meeting with the thorns or dealing with paperwork, whatever she is, she would dress casually. She does not, in many ways, she doesn't see herself as a kender. She knows she's a kender, but mentally she's way more closer to human. Um, and so she doesn't use the hoop pack in combat, even though there are times where she could grab a staff or use a sling and use the, she would have the same skill Dandy has with that. Uh, but even Dandy became much more of a knife fighter as that story progressed. Um, and that became, Dandy started collecting the magical daggers that we came across on that adventure. Found the fire dagger, which has always been her primary dagger. She's got a couple silver ones, some plus daggers, and so on and so forth. For a little while, she had the crystal dagger. Technically, she just still does. But, you know, um, the, uh, that became Dandy's thing, and she became much, much more of a knife basic than, than her hoop pack. Hoop pack she could do, but even in melee, she usually used the dagger. Um, Rose is the exact same way. Like when Rose merged with Menandra, she was badass with a with a spear slash staff that Menandra is, and she could use she could probably use more weapons than Dandy could at this point. But uh, she just has more focus that way. I will put a riddle to you that I'm not going to answer. Right? I'm going to put a riddle to you, and this is something that I haven't quite said in the story yet, but it's going to be implied. It's pretty implied. Already. Dandy is overwhelmingly wealthy. Dandy has more wealth than she could know what to do with. You think about it. She's had basically an equal share of the group of four. Darsh has the islands that he developed. Artemis built the temple. Mercy built a kingdom and a city. And granted, as they're doing those things, more money came in to help them. But Dandy and Michael have a store. You know what I mean? They help supply stuff to hunters very often at little to no charge. Um, especially if you're known in that community. So, if Dandy has all that money, so does Rose. Right? You'd be able to access it. If you have a ton of wealth, what would be your inspiration becoming a thief lord? Wealth? Are you now the thief, thief guild leader in not one but two major kingdoms? Is it because you want more money? Have more money than you could probably spend in your lifetime. And clearly, Rose lives within her means since she can't do anything extravagant without Dandy noticing it as well. Why did I buy all this stuff? You know what I mean? Um, so anything that Rose has, and I can tell you this, yes. There's a place in the city that is Rose's place. Whether it's an apartment, or it's in the sewers, or it's in a warehouse. Um, there is a place where Rose would keep her things. She has a place she goes to to be herself. Her clothing stuff is. And it would be a place that her thorns don't know about. Only she knows. All they know is she pops out from time to time dressed differently than when she was. Um... Information and control? Control, maybe. What would she need to control, right? I can tell you, basically what I'm saying is, what her is her primary motivation for being who she is? Um, and that is definitely the key to her storyline and things that we'll get into. I'm only posing these questions now for people to think about, um, but it's, it's not like I'm going to answer it right now or even right away. There are reasons why she does stuff, obviously. Uh, some being personal, some being professional, and some being mysterious. But um, I can say getting rich is not why she wanted to have that position. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, here's one other thing. And I, I don't know 
when we were talking about Merge Worlds the other day, and I was talking about the times when Rose showed up and Dandy didn't, there is another time that that happened in the story where I implied it, even though Dandy didn't know what was going on. Uh, but first, I'm going to answer some questions here. Uh, precious people information. Protection could work. Uh, vengeance. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that one, Smashly. Good question. If Rose is always aware and she isn't very tender, like how much knowledge would she have about what's in Dandy's pouches compared to Dandy? She would know everything in her pouch. She has an exceptional memory. Uh, also, maybe Petal could be a motivation if the first ever that kind of wake in here is a bit of... Ooh, another great point, Panda. Petal, also a great motivation. Petal is who she is. Petal's never going to take over a thieves' guild. So she's clearly not doing that so that Petal... C could take it over one day. But could Petal still be a part of that motivation? Great idea. You're not giving me ideas. I already know what it is. But I'm just saying, it's a great idea. Here's one of those moments. Remember I said that when Rose got scared when the man in the hat uh, 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 attacked, the undead attacked Serenity? Remember that part of the story? I said that it was Rose who felt the fear. It was Rose who knew something was wrong. It was Rose who freaked out when she saw Petal had begun to merge with Menandra. I had mentioned something in that during that story. It was a little brief aside. Never brought it up twice. And honestly, no one ever questioned it. But while Dandy was racing through the crowd, trying to get to where the kids were, she could sense that something was moving with her and that even though there were vampires and other things and stuff coming at her, there was something moving along with her that seemed to be keeping things away, that cleared her path of these dangers so she could go as fast as she could to get to where the kids were. That was the, that was the thorns. As she was racing through this crowd, so were they. And anything that might be... Because you're she's going to be a target of that too. A matter for vampire or what the thorns were ahead of her clearing that path and taking that away all three of them but she didn't know what it was she just knew there was something and that nothing was really attacking her but it felt like something was there helping keep stuff away but she didn't have time to focus on it she had to get to the kids i i stepped into that brief moment of her running th through the crowd because that was the thorns helping her because the thorns knew that in that moment they don't care who she is Rose or Dandy, they're going to protect her. You know, to them, many times, they're like, they never initiate the conversation. There's something that Rose does, a sign or something, whether it's a hand sign or a word or something, that would let them know she's Rose so they could talk to her. But they would never initiate a conversation for fear they'd be talking to Dandy and say something wrong. You know, unless they're specifically told otherwise, they would never initiate a conversation. But in most situations, someone's watching for her. A lot of times where someone's been watching Dandy just to keep her safe. Uh, let's see. Thank you, then, Ronald. That is a good call. Although, technically, the Black Rose started to take over the city before Petal was ever born. I would throw that out there. Not cutting out your your rose or your your petal idea because yes, that's very good. I'm saying it's not true, not saying it is. But when the when the rose lit those guys on fire in front of the the the, the castle, it was still being built, and there was the little sign that Cat had left on her bed that said "Not in my city." Before at that time, the only child that was alive was Seraph. It was be I think maybe Darsh. I think Dar uh, Maeve and them would, but they'd never been to Serenity. So Petal, Petal did not exist yet at the time that, that she had begun taking over the area. Uh, so, you know, there's that to think of. Of course, you know, doesn't mean she not know they may have kids one day, right? Uh, yeah, that running through the city thing. Because even I was trying to sit there and I'm like, when I was writing out last week's episode, I'm like, what were all the... Like, I kind of remembered most of them, but I knew there were other little times in there that Rose has snuck out in the story that were just little asides that only I would cut. And I'm like, I know there's two or three more. I can't remember. And I'm going to go back through this story one day. I'm like, ah, there's another one I can find. I remember it now. 
Because again, this spanned over a decade and a half of me slipping those in there, right? Bound to forget even a little bit of the small, because that wouldn't have been story important, right? That was a little bit more just sneaking it in there as a cameo of Rose. So, uh, yes. And that's a great comment. While she has other motivation stuff, Petal becoming a huge part of it, and even her plans changing because of Petal existing, very much so. Uh, that's a safe bet. She, it's the same with Dandy, right? Dandy and Michael, but here's what we do. We hunt undead, we do this. Well, I'm having Petal. I'm going to build a store and I'm going to stay in Serenity where my kid can be safe. <clears throat> Rose would be in the same situation. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, now I have a kid that I love and adore. Okay, go back. Now we're going to do it differently. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Yes, definitely Petal would have been a huge change in both Rose and Dandy's life um, because I, I did comment how rare it is for a half kinder to even be conceived. Um, Michael and Dandy going into a relationship would very likely be under the assumption they could never have a child because it's not common for that to happen, um, which is why it's almost impossible. But I can tell you, she won't be having a sibling. You know what I mean? For it to happen the once, obviously they must have a slightly better chance than normal. But no, Petal will never have a sibling. I, I've, I mean... You look at it, many of the ones that are born now probably wouldn't. I mean, even if you look at uh, artists, if they did, she'd be having like, a sibling 20 years younger than herself. Um, so of this generation, it's safe to assume most, if not all, of the children are already born. Okay. Almost. <laughs> so anyways, this is Rose. This is uh, This is Rose when she met and told... Who she really was to, to art. She wasn't standing in a bunch of gold at the time. Not arrogant like that. Um, and definitely, her wealth is also extreme just from her own business deal. Which is, a lot of that's probably hidden in several different locations that the Thorns know of. And her personal space where only she does. The Thorns are so loyal, they would never try to follow her and find out. Because if they found out, and she found out they found out, they'd be dead. That's, that's just how that rolls. She'd be dead. Or they'd be dead. Wow, that gave her a dirty face. I never thought of that. This wood makes it look like you're dirty. It's not actually changing your skin. It just makes it look like you've got soot or dirt on you. Oh, wow, that would be cool. You know, like like, a, like a, a, a gully dwarf. Like, obviously not moving, but a gully dwarf with the dirt all over his face and hands would be pretty boss. All right, well, we got to do these guys today, and I'm pretty excited about that. We'll get them saved and up on the website. I've got a few I've got to get up on the website. Um, so next Thursday is Merged Worlds Night. Um, I can tell you we will once again be stepping back into the kids. Uh, we will see little to none of Rose situation. I don't expect to do any of that. Probably in at least the next few weeks. Kind of. Uh, but nothing directly here. Um, it's mostly going to be getting back into the kids and their story. Rose, this thing is going on at the same time, and that's why I had to pull that in. I needed everyone to know that was happening, because that's going is setting off a chain of events, obviously. If I bring After all this time, if I brought Rose out, I did it for a reason. I think you guys have the common sense to know that I'm not giving anything away. Obviously, this is about to have an effect on something, and it does. It, it, it may not be immediate, but yes, that ball is now rolling now that we know who Rose is. There's a reason why she popped out now. Um, so we will see some of that, but not in the next couple episodes. We'll get back to the kids. Uh, we will be starting <clears throat> with Artists' Group. Um, and I am not sure we'll even hit Seraphs in the next episode, but we'll definitely be going into Artists' Group. Uh, we may be messing with their group for just a little while because now that they've made it to where they're, or they're about to make it to where they're supposed to be, Teradon, when all this stuff goes down, that's something they're going to be dealing with for a little while. So we're probably going to be messing with them for all the next episode, maybe most, if not all, the episode after that. But we won't be long before we're back to the guys as well. Try to keep it fair and even. Um, thank you guys for the great questions today, by the way. I really appreciate that. The, the lizard men question was awesome. I went on a tangent for 
10 minutes on that. Uh, as well as the questions about Rose and, and, the, and the other characters. I like all that. Now, Tom had asked a question earlier that I did not get to, and I want to find it. Where is it? Are there any insectoid races in 2nd edition? Yes. Um, not many. Uh, the most common one would probably be the Thrykreen, or Threekreen, depending on how you pronounce that, which is a, a Dark Sun-based race. Um, and how they're represented can really di di differ based on its source. In some of them, they're a regular standing dude who stands about seven to eight feet tall, who walks on two legs, but has four arms. That he can fight with four arms with a very insectoid head. Um, and then some of them, they look more like an actual, well, the praying mantis head. They actually look like the praying mantis body, so it's a longer body with two legs. Um, and then the middle legs can be used for fighting or to run on, the top legs being melee. Thrykreens can always attack with, with four legs. They get multiple attacks. Uh, they are very hard to fight with and immune to a large amount of psionics. Again, very Dark Sun-based. Dark Sun is overwhelmingly psionic-based. Um, and I have dabbled with some psionics in Merged Worlds on some of the side stories I've DM'd over the years. So there is a psionic presence here. Uh, it's just never found its way into the main story. And as we stand right now, I don't see any reason why it would. Unless I think of something down the road which would really make that cool to bring it in. But whereas we stand right now, I, I don't have any reason and, or, or any uh, uh, tension of bringing psionics into the primary storyline. Lord knows I add enough stuff. Wild magic and all that going on. Prophecies. Ah, so let's let's look at some of the last couple of minutes before I leave today. Let's touch back on unanswered questions. Um, what has happened in the merged world storyline that has never finished or has been left open ended? Um, there are a couple few ones that jump to my mind immediately. Uh, one of them being Shastra. Where'd she go? We haven't seen Shastra in twenty years. Vampire, she's not gonna die anytime soon. I mean, you know, old age. Um, so Shastra's out there somewhere. Lord knows we're gonna deal with her again. Um, somewhere there's an old man in a mystery room with three doors and a table with three boxes that one of them is still closed. Someone will eventually have to go into that room and get whatever's in that third box. That's an unanswered question that's out there. I have uh, several things along those lines. We have, uh, obviously, I was going to say, is Lomar the, of the Nine alive? We've just recently learned that he's still in play. But up until now, he was one of those opened or kind of things that was. Um, yeah, some things along. There's another big one that I can't tell you. Because it's too obviously going to give away something for the future. The desert Egyptian elves? I could do that. I could, I could work in some history on the desert Egyptian. I have the, the basics of what they stood for when I designed it. But I didn't go too deep into that because it wasn't totally linked to the story. But I could definitely do something with like that. The Shastra thing is always bothering me. For a few moments I thought maybe Cat could be... That idea went away. True. Um, so it's true. Uh, the Shastra thing is out there. Cat. Uh, once once you realized Cat had was was uh, having a physical relationship with Tevin, he knew Shastra. So we we definitely got that out of the water. Tevin wouldn't be messing with half vampire Shastra. I'm partial. Um, but when she first popped up once or twice. Cat only really popped up once, and that was when she left the little silver platter on Mercy's bed the day that Black Rose stepped, really stepped into activity. I was saving her for now. Tevin thing. Because I can tell you the her and Tevin together thing is there for a reason. 
Dark Elf Sun. Ah, we've can't, we, we have had him very, very recently. So at least we know he's back in play and he's about to start become, start into this, right? We've talked about that. I have to do this. So I got to be careful that Seraph doesn't see me, you know, given those instructions. So clearly he's going to be in or around something involving Seraph. Um, so yeah, having, having that ball rolling there makes me happy. See, that's up. Um, let's see. Lamia. Remember Lamia? Head of the row, uh, the old lady was head of the red robed clerics, mages in Paxawall, and then stuck in the sands of time. She, uh, was de aged down to like the age of 18, and then her and Tobias had a thing, and then when Tobias left to become the keeper, she, uh, her job and just left and no one ever saw whatever happened to Lamia again. Mia's out there. Ah, yes, that's correct. Our uh, Dragon Kender friends. I haven't seen them in a long time. That is correct. They are gone. I mean, out there, not gone forever. But yeah, they're, uh, the last time we saw them was when they delivered them to Dragon Arya. And I think they showed back up for a wedding after that. I think they were at Mercy's wedding, if I remember. Yeah, definitely a lot of people who have promised they could call the pond. Yes, very much so. And a great, great example of one of these things. It's like, ah, oh, he's never going to tell that story. But I did. The drow, right? I mean, we just had that adventure uh, recently. Um, and that was the, that, that definitely turned what we thought of the drow on its head. And entered them into play, right? Because now they're a, hey, if you ever need me, right? Who was he talking to? And he's like, you know, when the day comes and you go to kill that bastard, you know where you can find me, right? That's another ally in play that uh, is now actively partners in, with Serenity. The Nightmare Lord or something, you are 100% correct. The Nightmare Lord is out there. Uh, we, and even though they defeated him, uh, the, what was it called? There was the Nightmare circulate, circlet, I believe I called it. The Dream circlet. That's still somewhere in Oromon. The Kendership. Yep. The Cyclone. Last time we saw them, they won one of the races in the Darshtopia game. And the hat popped up for the second time ever. Um, yep, the Cyclone's out there. Uh, everything we've mentioned today, I can guarantee you, they have a place in the story moving forward. Everything we've talked about, yes, we will see them again before we finally get to the climactic ending of what would be this storyline. The storyline that Merged Worlds has always been based on. But yes, when that ends, I plan on doing more. <laughs> I'll never figure I'll stop. What else am I going to do with my... <laughs> We're going to see more about Rose's motivations. I wonder if they she was getting revenge on the people who technically caused her to exist, or she's disinterested in that. Well, you know, it's definitely, definitely the drow. She hates the drow as much as Dandy did. And that's, that's something, remember, all that hatred and anger that Dandy didn't know what to do with, Rose took into herself. She took that, didn't make it all go away, it became part of who she was. So, she technically hates that drow more than Dandy does. That's why it was Rose who was talking to Michael and said, no, we've made the decision. We're going to find him. Because they both, Rose and Dandy, were, weren't going to take no for an answer. If he's up there, I'm going to deal with this. Rose hates him just as much. Um, but Michael has Menandra. Menandra was technically part of the reason she exists. If, if she was going to do something with that, she's had 20 years plus to do it. But Michael's an ally in this and one of the few people Rose genuinely trusts. Uh, because he knows Michael's never going to do anything that's going to hurt Dandy. As long as she's part of Dandy. Um, the Pirate Crystals. Hey, that's another good one. Yeah, the Pirate Crystals. The one that Seraph went and got for uh, Endian Waver. Yeah. That one is a long, long storyline happening, too. Those crystals were super early. Yeah, a lot of really cool plot points that are left open. Everything we've talked about today, I know the next step of their storyline. Some of them we'll see sooner than others. Um, 
I'm not trying to brag. I just when I put them in there, I knew exactly what they're for. And I have a list of them hidden somewhere, so I don't forget some of my plot lines. I'm sure there's a few I'm not even mentioning right now. Right now, my head's stuck on one specifically that we talked about. That's going to be the next one of the things we talked about today. We're going to see much sooner than later. That said, we're sitting on two hours, and I usually try to keep the stream around that time period. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and call this one a day. I know today's been a lot of chat about story. Merge World specific, not as much about D&D in general, other than some of the questions about classes and races and the lizard thing, which was really cool. But I do enjoy talking not just Merge Worlds, but how I do my style of stuff. And maybe one day it'll help you do whatever it is you're doing with your D&D groups, adventures. Will always be opportunity. Um, I will be during the charity stream in June. So in June, I'm doing a charity stream. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do one uh, every quarter for the rest of this year. First one is in June, and that is going to be uh, for animal animal based charities uh, or the non kill animal shelters in my area. Um, I did one last year. I'm going to do it here again. Uh, so in June, there'll be a charity. Uh, stream there'll be a 12 hour stream on youtube and a 12 hour stream on twitch within the same week obviously not the same day um and 100 of donations will go to help animals and vet bills and food and all that kind of stuff i never see a penny of it all goes to them uh, there'll be some prizes and things given away uh during that um that may include a D, &D session in merged worlds a short one for a select group of winners. Um, so there's that. Uh, but I've been wanting to put something like that in there and doing like a uh, Skype D&D session um, with folks I think would be a lot of fun. Probably be a short one. We'd film it over one or two days, several hours. So, And it may end it may just be for fun. It may end up on a channel. I, I wouldn't stream it live, but I, it may come up as an edited format. That's something fun I thought I'd throw out there that I'm thinking about the charity stream. So I'm going to call that a day. Uh, tomorrow I am not streaming. Of course, I don't stream on Fridays. Saturday night I'll be over on Twitch, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, streaming with Colonel Gaming, our Minecraft Sky, uh, Chroma Sky 2 series. Sunday and Monday I'm back here starting at 9.30 p.m. with uh, Insane Craft. And then Tuesday I'll be back over on Twitch with some Conan. So come on by. Hang out with us. If you had a good time today, be sure to click like. If you watch this 10 years down the road, please click like as well because it definitely helps the channel. Uh, and thank you for sharing your time with me today. I always enjoy this stream very much and look forward to the next one. But I hope you have yourself a great rest of your week, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again very, very soon. Y'all have yourselves a great day.